to the summit of Mount Kea on the Big Island of Hawaii. This is the tallest mountain on Earth. Well, at least when you measure a mountain from its base to its summit. This is the highest point on the Big Island of Hawaii. Um, over 13,700 and some change feet. Uh, but a good 20,000 or so feet of the mountain is below sea level. So if you actually take the true measure of this mountain from the ocean floor to the summit, uh, it's actually taller than Everest. You can see we're above the clouds here. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here on the Big Island with a group of students. Uh, took a journey here up to the summit of Mount Ikea. Uh, so we'll show you a couple things here. Hopefully this is coming through with the wind blowing. We can see to our south the large domed shield volcano of Mount Aloha, which is actually the more active of the two volcanoes, but it's slightly smaller in elevation. And so that mountain uh, erupted just this last year, December of 2022, and is most likely going to erupt sometime in the near future and a little bit of snow on top of that that volcano and this volcano even though they're both shield volcanoes these two mountains are in very different stages in terms of their development and uh, evolution so as these hawaii volcanoes evolve they reach their peak or maturity if you will in the stage that Mount Aloha is in. That's what's called the shield building stage. It's active, it's pouring out fluid lavas that coat its summit and travel down the sides of the volcano. In contrast, here on Mount Ikea, we can see the topography is a little bit different. There's steeper sides to it, especially if you get a good view of this uh, from below. You can see these steep cones, these cinder cones that make up some of the high points on the flanks here. We can walk down this way uh, to the north, I suppose, uh, and look at some of the cinder cones here along its flanks. This volcano, Mount Ikea, is in what's called the post shield uh, stage. So the lava here is not erupting as much, and instead of erupting um, fluid lava, the lava has become a lot more sticky and pasty with a little bit of gas mixed in, so it's erupting uh, this gas rich material and, pro and producing a lot of these cinder cones we see that dot the flanks of Mount Ikea. Of course, Mount Ikea Summit is accessible because there's uh, several <coughs> research telescopes here run by various research institutions and consortiums. Um, these folks come up here, they live just down the hill at 9,000 feet and then come up here to work um, and do their research with the telescopes. Uh, let's head over to the other side here. On a clear day, you can see across to Maui, but we've got some clouds today, so I don't know if that's going to be possible. Um, you can also see there's snow up here. It kind of surprises some people to learn that there's actually snow that accumulates on the Big Island uh, because of the high elevations. So we're looking at some of the other telescopes here, sitting on top of these shield volcano or cinder cones. Um, the other cinder cone here, just a fantastic um, just landscape. And another interesting fact about Hawaii and its um, summit area is this used to be the site of glaciers. So during the last ice age, Mauna Kea was capped with glaciers. And there's even places down on the road where you can see uh, crude striations on the rock that indicate the movement of the ice. It wasn't a very large glacier, it was only maybe a couple hundred feet thick, <clears throat> and it didn't extend very far down the mountain. But during the last 10, 15,000 years, this was capped with ice, as was Mount Aloha. But with Mount Aloha, all the recent eruptions have obscured any uh, glacial evidence. So we'll head down the hill here, and it's kind of a treat to also be able to touch some Hawaiian snow. There we go. Some good old nice little Hawaiian snowball for you here uh, in May here on the Big Island. Um, let's go 
back up the hill and see what else we can see. Oh boy, this one's steep. Of course, the altitude can be pretty taxing on people. It's important to hydrate, kind of listen to your body, make sure you got, um, you're feeling well before you head up the mountain. Uh, and it's a four wheel drive only sort of situation. Telescopes are just beautiful to look at. But we'll go over here to the far side, see what else we can see. It's also quite cold up here. As you can see, I'm wearing a couple jackets, a beanie. My hands are quite cold. I also just touched snow. Um, and the wind is blowing. Also, as you just, just coming up that little hill from the snowbank, pretty much winded me. So you can definitely feel the altitude here at almost 14,000 feet above sea level. But we're well above tree line, no vegetation growing up here. It's essentially a, a tundra-like climate. Uh, you can see, yeah, the oxidation. The cinder cones, because they have so much gas in them when they erupt, uh, the cinders themselves tend to be much more oxidized. The iron gets a lot more oxidized, so they tend to take on a much more reddish hue. Uh, the more brown material down here, which is uh, lava flows, has also been pulverized a little bit by the glacial ice and um, ground up a little bit. So we'll go down maybe to this next telescope and take one one last view here off the top of the world, if you will, um, and see what we can see. I'm going to pull out my uh, my compass here because I'm not want to let you know which direction I'm walking. I'm a little bit a little bit turned around here. It happens to geologists. So we're heading right now. We're heading pretty much north um, towards this last telescope. So. Uh, this would be looking more towards the east or northeast in this direction, and this direction would be uh, more to the the northwest. So I think if we had a little fewer clouds than what we're seeing there, we might be able to see uh, Maui in the distance. I bet the sun sets up here pretty incredible too. So yeah, more cinder cones. Uh, and these are all probably a few thousands of years old. Mauna Kea is a, a volcano that's classified as being uh, dormant, which basically means um, hasn't erupted in maybe a few hundreds to maybe a thousand or so years, but there's the potential of it having maybe a few more of these cinder cone building eruptions. There's literally uh, dozens, maybe up to a hundred or more of these cinder cones that dot both the summit and the flank of Mauna Kea. And eventually Mauna Loa and Kilauea, as they move off the hotspot, as the Pacific Plate drags Hawaii off of the hotspot, eventually they'll, those volcanoes will also enter this post-shield phase where the smooth surface of Mauna Loa will end up just getting uh, pockmarked, if you will, or dotted with these cinder cones as it sort of advances in age. And then eventually these volcanoes will become extinct like Kohala or the volcanoes we see on the other islands like Maui and Oahu and Kauai. So we'll sign off here. One last view off to the north or northwest. Again, the telescopes here built on these cinder cones. Telescopes are up here, of course, because uh, the atmosphere is thinner. There's less light pollution and gases in the atmosphere to look through. So it allows telescope viewing and observing the stars uh, to be much more productive. So pretty amazing. Just one last little 360 here from the summit of Mount Ikea. Telescope. And 
and looking off in that direction. So thanks for joining me. I uh, appreciate you watching and being a loyal viewer. Uh, if you want to donate, there's donate buttons on the banner of the YouTube channel. There's uh, links in the video description. And there's also a thanks button below the viewer there. But um, happy to bring you with me on this little adventure from literally, in many respects, the top of the world. Thank you and mahalo.